Stand up. I need you to check yourself. I'm going to be teaching on food this morning <laughs> and weight issues. And I need you to check yourself in two places. First, your body. Check and see how tight your clothes are. Check your pants around your waistline. Check your legs. How tight are they? Check your shoes. A lot of people lose weight in their shoe size. They, their feet are swollen with water weight. Check your, your arms. And you ladies around here, you know what I'm talking about. Check around here. You know that thing cuts in daily and you sit there and hate it? Check that too. You're about to get loose there, amen? In a good way. In a good way. Amen? Now, make sure you've examined yourself and know how big you are at the moment. Now get quiet. And I want you to examine in here too. How do you feel about food right now? Is it in control of you? Are you lusting after food? Is food a big preoccupation in your mind? Are you reliant on food? Does food have some sort of control over you? Just check yourself in here now. How many of you got a little revelation on that thought? Raise your hand. Really high. Okay, good. Almost everybody. All right, go ahead and sit down. I think food has become a major issue for people all around the world. Amen? Food and weight issues have caused us condemnation, shame, embarrassment, caused us pain, mental, emotional, physical pain. Food can control us. It can affect every part of our life. And it's also affecting our physical health. Do you know that right now more people die of obesity-related diseases than people die of cancer. That's right. Obesity can cause heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol levels, cancer, infertility, back pain. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There are a lot of people dying and suffering from symptoms and issues that spring out of food issues, uh, out of obesity, amen? Now, as I teach today, I believe a lot's going to happen. I believe that there's going to be faith risen up and supernatural power released to usher in miracles and deliverances that are in connection with food. After these sessions, you're going to see the way you eat is going to change. The way you think about food is going to change. The way food controls you is going to change. Amen? Many of you are going to lose weight instantly today. It's true. A lot of you will wake up tomorrow and you will have lost a lot of weight. It's true. A lot of you will start to see the weight coming off progressively over the days and the weeks to come. Amen? It's true. Things are going to change for you because you're going to start to understand the supernatural abilities that we already have to get delivered of these food addictions and the problems that come with them. Hallelujah? Now... As we start this teaching, you know, many people will be watching and saying, well, I just don't know if I can watch the skinny white chick up on stage lecture me about food. I'm a little bit bothered and offended by that. So I thought I'd start out with my story first so that I could be qualified to teach you about food. I have had a battle, a battle with food my entire life since I can remember I've always been addicted to food, controlled by food, and had a huge level of lust, literal lust, for food. I remember for my 10th birthday, my mom made me one of those huge porterhouse steaks. You know, those big steaks, right? She made me a big steak, a big, huge baked potato, right? And then for dessert, she gave me a half a gallon of vanilla ice cream surrounded by a half a dozen of those really big glazed donuts. You know, all that? I ate every bite of all of that by myself in record time. And I was 10. That's a lot of food. I have been plagued by food issues my whole life. I've always eaten too much, eaten too fast, eaten when I wasn't hungry, could not stop thinking about food all the time, all the time. I remember once in my, in my high school years, 
I went to go run a track meet. I was living in Hawaii at the time. And I went to another island to run the big state track meet. And the night before, we all decided to go out and, and go to Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor. Do you remember Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor? That was a wonderful place. It's kind of like Disneyland of food. And we went to Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor, and they had this thing called the pig trough. It had six scoops of ice cream, two whole bananas, six different toppings, and then nuts and all that sprinkled on the top with whipped cream, right? Now, every time you ate a pig trough, the waitresses would come out and they'd go, they'd sing a little song to you. You're a pig, you're a pig, you're a really big pig, pig, pig. Right? Remember that? So we go to Farrell's to celebrate, and I don't have one pig trough, I have three. Can you imagine the waitresses on the third time, you're a pig, you're a pig, you're a really big pig. My dad is here and he can attest to all of this. <laughs> it was frightening. It was frightening, this, this, this hold that food had on me. I, I can remember, you know how when you're growing up, the big deal, the big treat is when, you know, we have like a night out when your parents take you to a, a restaurant and you get to eat something cool in a restaurant. And when we would have that, I don't, I don't remember, I think it was like once a month, mom and dad would take us out to this really nice steakhouse you had to drive far to get to it because we kind of lived in the middle of nowhere. And we'd get to the steakhouse, and I'd order the biggest steak they had because, you know, you could order like a 9-ounce, 11-ounce, 13-ounce, whatever was the biggest one, that's the one I'm having. I would order the big steak. And when the steak would come with all the accoutrements and everything else, I would cut these huge bites. I'm talking big chunks of meat, big, big, huge chunks of meat hanging off the end of my fork. And this is how I would eat it. It would be a hurried cut, then the big chunk, stuff it in the mouth, and you go, one. Two, three, <sighs> swallow. And then really fast, another one. One, two, three, uh, swallow. <laughs> one, two, three, swallow. Okay, my mom freaks out. I can remember one night my mom literally taking me by the ear, dragging me out of the restaurant and screaming at me, you better stop eating like that. You're going to choke to death. It didn't scare me, obviously, because I kept on going. But it was really bad. I had issues with food, amen? I remember when I went to prison, I always seemed to have some sort of a trauma with food. You know, many of you know that I went to prison. When I went to prison, my food injuries got worse because now I was being starved to death. <laughs> you know, I stayed in a, in a holding facility for two years, and in that facility, you didn't go to the chow hall. They put your food in these trays and rolled the food to you and then delivered it to your unit. So, you know, they're feeding like 1,500 peeps this way. So by the time they got to you, all the gravy or whatever else they had on it was congealed and cold and the grease is laying in this layer over all the food. It, it was horrible. It was a horrible place to be. I can remember at the end of that stay, two years, I stayed there longer than most people. They usually stay you know, a week, a month, three, three months, but not me, two years. And at the end of it, I had dark circles that were an inch and a half in width underneath my eyes from malnutrition at this facility, right. The last three months or so, they fed us food with maggots in it. Yeah, maggots every day, and food came with maggots in it. So we threw a food strike one day. We picked out all the maggots out of the tray and we put them in a cup and we stood in front of the door and we, we rallied until the head of security, uh, who I've had my, who I'd had my meetings with, <laughs> came to uh, confront us about it. And when she walked in, we said, look, we're not eating this food anymore. This food has maggots in it. And if you guys don't do something about it, we're going to have somebody, we're going to write our, our relatives or we're going to call, you know, one of our loved ones and tell them to call the newspaper. And we're going to get you guys in trouble. Now, this was a privately owned facility. And if that happened, they could get shut down, right? So they didn't want that to happen at all. So here she is. She's trying to convince us that the maggots aren't maggots. So she takes the cup, this woman. She looked like Corella DeVille. Seriously. She reaches into the cup, pulls out a maggot, squishes it in her fingers like this, and then she goes, puts it in her mouth and eats it. 
Then she looks and she goes, oh, that's not a maggot. And I would go like this, oh my gosh, we're in bigger trouble than I thought. You just ate a maggot. Okay? You have big problems. You just ate a maggot. I thought I had food problems. You have a food problem. You just ate a maggot. Trauma, food trauma, food trauma. 